What's going on guys? Today we're going to answer a viewer's question and they want to know if you can use flex core MIG wire on a cast iron repair. Well, let's find out. So the first part in your cast iron repair is probably one of the most important. It's going to be beveling out uh, the cast iron. You got to make sure you got a good bevel all the way around. You got to have a place for that filling material to go. So best practice would have you using a cold chisel and a hammer to reduce the contamination that you put into the joint from the abrasive disc but you know this is real world so we're just going to use an abrasive disc. Then after you get it beveled out then you're going to want to line everything up and get your fit up just right so everything fits good. So there that's going to look like a good fit up right there now all we got to do is get the welder out and I'll talk to you about some settings. For this repair we're going to be using flux core wire. So first thing we got to do is get our regular solid wire off the spool right now and feed in some some new flux core wire. There, so now we got our other reel off. Something else you might not know is you got to change your polarity when you go from solid wire to flux core. See that right there? DC electrode negative is when you're using flux core wire. DC electrode positive is for solid. So, see these lug terminals right here? This is the configuration we want. So, come down here and you can see I've got to reverse this. I gotta just swap these two around. I keep a nut driver right inside the machine. This one's uh, 7 16 for this machine. This one's the Hobart Handler 140. That way when you when you need it, you're not you know trying to find, you're not looking around for it. You just you have it. I just keep it right in the bottom of the tray, right, right where the wire goes. All right, so there's that. Now we gotta put our wire on. Now, here's the wire that I'm using. It's Matheson. Now, I don't know if this is true, uh, but I was told that Matheson wire and Lincoln wire are all the same. They're all made in the same factory. But I don't know if that's true or not, so don't hold me to it. Now, another thing we gotta do is we gotta change this drive roll out. On this machine, you see how this groove is smooth right here, and this one is serrated. The, ser the smooth is for the solid wire, the serrated is for the flux core. So we got to push in on this die and flip it around. Yep, and that's all we do right there. There, now the serrated die is where the wire is going to go through. And now I'm just feeding this wire back into the liner of the MIG. Now I also like to keep my uh, MIG gun hose uh, stretched out. I got it nice and straight with no kinks. That way I can uh, feed it through. And we can do at this point is tuck that down into that groove, put the roller wheel down and bring this forward. Now we can just pull the trigger and it'll feed right out the MIG gun. That's where these combination uh, MIG pliers come in handy because they allow you to do everything. They allow you to cut the wire and whatnot. So, there. There we go. Put our tip back in. Give her a little snug. Yeah. All right. So here's a little bit of information. Now, when you run flux core, what this is doing now with the configuration, the way we have this set up, now this part is going to be hot on the on the machine. So 
I, I pull this off because if you make contact with this against your work or whatever it's uh, grounded to, you're going to burn the end of this. So see how I've actually done it right, right there. You see how it's got a little nib taken out of it? That's because I touched the workpiece using FlexCore. They make a ceramic piece that goes on over this to prevent you from doing that accidentally. I don't have one, so today we're I'm going to keep this off. And we're just going to weld real careful not to make any contact of this piece of the uh, gun with our work piece. So, just a good little piece of information. If I was you, I'd probably pick one up, especially if you're, you're new to welding, just so you don't make a mistake. Because even uh, those of us that do it a lot obviously make mistakes. So it's, it's easy to do. So pick yourself up one of those little ceramic nozzle things. Uh, maybe I'll put a link down in the description if you want to know more about it. But... Let's get going. Yeah, so now we got it tacked together. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to heat this thing up and give it a nice preheat. Now, a lot of you guys, whenever I make uh, a video like this, welding cast iron, a lot of you guys get real upset about me doing it other, any other way other than oxy fuel or TIG brazing. Now, with that said, that, that's generally, the, the, in my opinion, the best way of doing it. Uh, but I kind of like to experiment with different things in this series to see what really works and what really doesn't. And I've had some success using other different methods. Now, if you guys want to find out about all the different methods and what they tested at when we broke them, uh, I'll put a link up above here somewhere. So. moisture in that uh, cast iron another reason doing this removes the moisture for it see that line right along in here look that's all like water coming out of it but the main reason that we preheat this is to help prevent cracking now when you go from room temperature to welding temperature the metal expands rapidly which causes it to crack well what we're doing here is slowly heating it up so it helps eliminate that. I don't know if it really matters, but uh, I've got three little small bolts here. I'm gonna put underneath this uh, pan because I just feel like this big metal surface here is gonna act like a heat sink and draw a lot of this heat out of this pan that we're trying to do by getting it up off the, uh, off the bench and uh, having a very small contact point that this is being held up by. I have a feeling that it will retain the heat a little bit better, so we'll see. So all I'm doing here is just going around, focusing the heat mainly around the handle area, but I'm also going everywhere else too, just to try to help, you know, get this up to temperature. You know, if you can get it up to four or 500 degrees, that's great. Now, another key to successfully welding cast iron is to do it in little sections. As you'll see here, I'm only doing an, about an inch at a time or a little less, and then I'm peening it. Now, what that does is by doing just a little bit, that helps eliminate your heat input so you're not overly overheating it. And then peening it, all that does is, is just to help relieve the stress in the area of the weld. That's all it does. I'm going back through and just doing little welds here. Now you can see I'm just doing little spots. I'm trying to fill that uh, little bit up at the top. And again, peening it again. That's, that's the key to it. Do little short welds. Try to eliminate as much heat input as you can. Uh, peen it. And then you need to do a nice, slow, controlled cool down, which I prefer to do in some placing. All right, next thing we gotta do, gotta get this thing buried in some sand, and it is hot. What this does is, is this is gonna uh, allow this to retain its heat, and it's gonna cool down nice and slow. And all I'm using is just uh, some regular old play sand. You can get it at a big box store. You can't use, uh, you know, sand out of the ground because it's generally too wet. You, know? you might be able to use beach sand if you went to a beach and you had it dry. Just make sure that your sand's dry. You don't want it wet. This will, like I say, this will insulate this, allow it to cool down nice and slow because, you know, that's when it, that's when it gets cracked. 
when you heat up cast iron real quick and just let it cool down real quick. This will allow it to cool down over several hours. All right, see how we did. Well, I don't see any cracks in it. Doesn't look like there's any problems. Not that I can see anyways. Well, let's see if she holds any weight. So if you guys have been following along with uh, this cast iron series, you'll know that uh, after each of the unconventional, we'll call them unconventional repairs that we've done, that we've done a kind of an informal test to see just how much weight uh, our repair will hold before it breaks again. And like I said, it's just an informal test but, uh, you know, it gives you kind of an idea of, of uh, what it's good for, what it'll hold. So, there we are. So, what we're going to do now is uh, I just put this wooden block across here because the first time I did it, uh, this little crevice down inside this handle, the, the, the pan rotated. So, this is just to spread the, uh, the clamping force over the entire handle. The repair is out here. So... It's gonna break in this area, we already know that. Uh, but what we're trying to do is see how much weight it'll hold. Now, I've got a, every video that we've done so far, we've tested it. So we've, we know what each process has produced for a weight. Anyways, let's test this. You guys remember this, right? So now as we've done with all the other processes, we'll continue to add weight and find out how strong it is until it breaks. Now, you know, I get a lot of flack for doing this sometimes, as I mentioned earlier. People say, you know, why would you MIG weld it or why would you stick weld it? You know, you're an idiot. I don't know why you're doing it this way. Well, the reason for it is, is that, you know, not everybody has an oxy fuel setup and not everybody has a TIG welder. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that if I can repair something, I kind of like to try it. And here you have an actual comparison of a bunch of different processes. So if all you have is a flux core MIG wire, well, at the end of this video, you're going to know just how well flux core MIG wire works on repairing a piece of cast iron. And if you want to find out how it compares to, say, stick welding it with a nickel rod, you can reference that. And at the very end, we'll have a measurement in weight of how the repair held up which one was better which one wasn't so it's kind of just a quick measurement and it was you know it's a lot of fun it's kind of interesting myself I find all right I'm gonna to try to hang this bucket off the bottom this bucket's pretty heavy hopefully it doesn't snap and rip my face off so that did it let's take a look well, that's interesting. Uh, in a lot of areas, it actually broke away the metal. Look, you can see how the cast broke there. It broke there. It broke there. Let's find out how much it held before it broke. Now you can see here I'm all hopped up on Monster Energy, getting all this metal in the bucket, and let's see what this thing weighs. Alright, so that is 41.458 kilograms. 91.4 pounds, that's what it equals in kilograms. So again, this isn't about necessarily trying to find the best way of doing it. It's actually finding the way of doing it. That's why I've done this series, because if all you have is a MIG welder with some flux core MIG wire, you know what, it, you know what to expect compared to doing it other ways. Now, so far the way we've tested it, I believe if I'm going by memory, the best way we have found to do it was to use uh, the nickel rod welding it with a DC stick welder. So I think so far that that has been the strongest uh, 
solution we have found so far and from what I believe I think this may be the weakest solution but that's still 91 uh, pounds or so you know 90 plus pounds on that cast iron thing now you know everybody's like oh, I wouldn't put that on there this you know the cast iron handle breaks off you guys if you, you think that I'm just trying to repair a seven dollar pan here uh, to save myself some money that's not what this is about it's to have a baseline of trying different things in different repair methods and comparing them to one another it's just I'm using this pan because hopefully there isn't a whole lot of debate of whether or not this thing is made of cast iron. That just kind of takes that variable out of it. Uh, you know, you test other things and people say, well, that's cast steel. And then there's this whole debate back and forth about what, what it is for the material that I'm working with. This here is obviously a cast iron piece. I'm not advocating that you fix a cast iron handle to do any of that. It's just comparing each repair method, you know, MIG, TIG, brazing, uh, stick welding and using different filler metals and see how they compare at least strength wise uh, to one another from each different process so we have done a pile of processes and like I said I'll have a link down below and up above so you guys can just you know browse through to find out what you know application you have maybe all you have is a stick welder and you can find some information on welding it up with stick welding and you can see actually how strong in the end that repair compares to other repairs. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys are wondering about any of the things that I'm doing, uh, you can check the links down below. You can find me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'm always posting stuff on there about what I'm working on. And if you have any questions about the tools I'm using, there'll be links for that down below as well. Until next week, guys, I'll see you then. Stay safe. Have a good day. Bye.